my trade, so to speak, is is fiction writing. You know, and and I'll boil it down to this. I feel like every fiction writer's work dealing with characters comes down to identity to some extent. You know, we're always examining what our characters do, how our characters do, why our characters do. And that ultimately has some kind of relationship to how you think, how you feel individually as a writer. Um, for me, growing up, you know, I, I was born in Taiwan, but I grew up here in the States. And I grew up on Long Island, which is like um, a really strange place. You know, especially for when you're the only Chinese kid in the school, and which was literally the case. So I think another one came in, and a Vietnamese kid came in, like when we were about to graduate. But it was like the three of us, you know. And it was—it's just a bizarre thing. So like, I spent a lot of time in my life kind of questioning my identity, who, why, how, what the hell is going on, so on and so forth. Um, it's worked out. I'm okay. Everyone will feel sleep well knowing that, right? Uh, but in, in terms of what's going on today, um, I think it's still a really pertinent question. It will continue to be a really pertinent question. And I think what we're going to do is we'll, we're each going to speak a little bit. I'm going to spend more of my time using uh, this wonderful clip of uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Um, I won't say too much about the clip. I think the clip kind of speaks for itself. I'll just say that it had a lot of effect on me in terms of how... First of all, who is speaking, okay? Who is speaking? How do we identify with this speaker? How does this speaker have an ability to kind of communicate a message that other individuals will not have an ability to communicate? You know, for instance, you know, Donald Trump versus your professor of Asian studies, your professor of history, your professor of literature, your mom, your dad, your uncle, whoever, okay? Um, and then the mediums through which an individual like Donald Trump can kind of say something and have that something transmitted to the world almost instantaneously. You know, so those were the things that kind of struck me. Um, so I'll just kind of leave them out there while you guys listen to the great Donald Trump speak. And then uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about what he said. Oh. It's very hard for our countries to compete with China. We make better products than them. By the way, that's the most important thing. We make better products. You look at their sheetrock, making people sick and killing people all over the country. Jobs close up. The, sea, the sheetrock was... You see them as the enemy, don't you? I see them as the enemy. Yeah, I, 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 but I don't they, they, know, they know they're the enemy. They are the enemy. They say they're the enemy. Yeah, but they're, they're not the enemy in the sense that they don't want to kill you, right? They want to kill you in business. They want to take over this country economically. But that's different to wanting to kill you, like a, an Al-Qaeda. Well, when, I, when you I hear you say enemy, enemy. very bad. No, but when I hear you say enemy, I think it's too strong a word. They're a business competitor who at the moment is out-competing America. Right? They are not really out-competing, they're cheating. When you cheat, and we have people that don't know what to do because we have the wrong people in office, that's not out-competing. Do you think we have smart enough people to deal with the Chinese and the Indians and these new competitors out there in business? I think they're smart, but I don't think they have any savvy. They don't have the savvy. They don't have what it takes. I think identity is something that's very, very complex, and it's not, and it's worth thinking about. So I think that it's an important uh, question to understand if we want to affect positive political change in our world, what kind of identities <coughs> we want to have, and with whom do we want to connect, and for what reason, right? And so I think, in a way, if you think about Asian Americans, since we're here talking about through, at the Asian American uh, Writers Workshop and at the Asian American uh, Institute here, Research Institute. Even Asian American has a very abstract identity. I mean, do you think uh, Koreans and uh, <coughs> Japanese get along so well in, in Asia? Uh, whereas Korean Americans and Japanese Americans wanna, wanna make some kind of uh, connection here be out of a shared political uh, choice and out of a shared history here as well, right? So I think that when we think about Arab Americans, where do Arab Americans fit within that, that dynamic? And where do, do Muslim Americans fit within that dynamic as well, particularly within Asian America? If you think about Asian America, is, is that supposed to describe a geography of Asia? Well, if it's just supposed to describe Asia, 
uh, relate to that geography, then why sh wouldn't it include Arabs, since half the Arab world is in Western Asia as opposed to the Eastern part of Asia? But for some reason, we don't think about a uh, Arab Americans as being part of Asian America. And then when it comes to Muslim Americans, well, Muslim is even more complex. What, do you know what the biggest group of Muslims in the United States is, if you're talking ethnically or racially? African Americans. Right? People here, may, you know, you might think people here in the United States, when they think Muslim now, they think somebody from the Middle East. But if you had asked the Muslim 10 years ago, uh, before 9-11, who's the most famous American Muslim you can think of, it would be Malcolm X. Right? It would, there would be a different history that they're, they're latching on to. Uh, so I think we have to be really uh, conscious about how we understand what identity is and what it's doing. <laughs>